The civil war in Syria may be a world away, but its impact is felt deeply in Sydney. As the Muslim community celebrated the Feast of Eid, there were renewed prayers for peace in the troubled region. But the sectarianism, even violence of the conflict, is threatening to tear the tightly woven Middle Eastern community apart. James Carlton met with some of, the, of Sydney's Syrians, both pro and anti-regime, to file this report and a warning this story contains extreme graphic images of violence and mutilation. <laughs> It began two years ago with a brutal crackdown on a peaceful protest movement, President Assad responding with snipers, torture and secret police. The uprising militarised the government troops and planes against the new ragtag Free Syrian Army. Both sides helped with foreign fighters, weapons and money. With an official death toll surpassing 100,000, the UN forecasts there'll be three and a half million Syrian refugees by year's end. Yet it's a single event that seemingly encapsulates the horror of this civil war. The rebel Abu Sakha cutting out the heart of a government soldier who he says killed his children and 200 more. A world away in a Dulwich Hill restaurant, a police escort is keeping watch. Inside, a visiting nun is raising money for the victims and calling for peace and reconciliation. So this is now the second visit by Mother Agnes to Australia. She was here in October, about nine months ago. Agnes Mariam is Mother Superior at Syria's 1,500-year-old monastery of St. James the Mutilated. We have 10 million people in Syria that are in need for everything. Five and a half millions are displaced and two millions are outside Syria. She's warning the local Middle Eastern community the Arab Spring has been hijacked by Sunni extremists, including some from Australia. I know uh, that uh, you have uh, Australian uh, citizens coming to Syria uh, to perform jihad. Uh, you know, jihad is a spiritual title, but in the reality, uh, they are performing terrorism. Mother Mariam concedes the government tortures and jails civilians without trial, but some rebel factions like the Al-Qaeda-linked Al-Nusra Front are worse. There are the, the secret services in Syria. When they take you, they will beat you. There are some uh, means of torture, but the jihadists are terrorists. It's not the same. They will put, they will take you and they will, uh, for example, behead you. The Sydney siders here say they love Syria and its mosaic of cultures and religions stretching from antiquity to the present day. Turkmen, Druze, Kurds, Assyrians, Circassians. They fear for the future if the rebels win. As much as they hate the suffering and despair now, they fear it will be much worse if the Assad forces are defeated. Drive just 10 minutes away and you're in Lakemba, the heart of Sydney's Sunni Muslim community. Here, Assad's enemies also fear annihilation. We are the victims. Who got the weapons? Who got the airplanes? Who got the tanks? In their small headquarters, supporters of the Free Syrian Army watch atrocities committed by the government forces and, even more brutal, their Alawite militias. The horror beamed directly into Sydney with a digital drip feed of graphic videos and its inflaming local tensions. In Western Sydney, firebombings, beatings, even a shooting have been linked to the conflict and several Facebook pages encourage Sunnis to boycott businesses run by Sydney's Alawites, a Shiite minority. We love you Sunnis. We want to murder your men and rape your women. Do what you like. These are businesses that have shown support for the murderers of the Muslims. There are people who are already involved and probably inclined towards criminal activity who are simply using what's happening in Syria as an excuse for some criminal activity in Sydney. But I do stress the numbers are very small. From his Lakemba restaurant, famous for its camel meat, Mohammed al Bramawi wants Sydney to remain peaceful, even though the Syrian army killed his niece just two months ago. My sister and her daughter, they, when they light the candle to see the kitchen and two bombs comes to the house from the Assad regime. 
my sister disabled. Uh, she lost her uh, daughter. What's your message to the Australians who want to fight for the Free Syrian Army? Good luck. I said good luck because we live here under this law and we have to respect this law. And if anyone gonna go fight uh, there, good luck to him. I hope he will back. And the endless killing means Assad and his regime must go. The rebels down there, they don't want to negotiate to him. We've been asking that a lot. Let's open a channel, let's finish this war, let's get our hostages from inside. Stop the killing of the kids. We are happy if we stop the killing for uh, at least save the kids. We lost a lot of generation down there. But Mother Agnes says that can't happen because the US is sending arms and the Gulf states are sending foreign fighters. So that's why I say to the international community, please withdraw from Syria. You have done enough. You have done enough in Cyprus. You have done enough in Palestine. You have done enough in, uh, uh, in Iraq. You have done enough in Afghanistan. You have done enough in Libya. You have done enough in Tunis. You have uh, done enough in Egypt. It's enough. Yesterday, Nick Caldas was in Lakemba, celebrating Eid, the end of Ramadan. He himself is an Arab Christian, and he says the relative peace of Sydney is a credit to migrant communities. Here we have a, a really multicultural community. Sydney is, you know, in many ways, a miracle of multiculturalism. There's some pretty awful things happening at the moment in the Middle East and various conflicts, and yet despite that, the leaders of those communities have been very vocal and active in making sure that no conflict exists here. Thanks, James Carlton.